Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Codesultant channel. Today, we will be discussing the basic rules regarding conductors, specifically single conductor arrangements to reduce inductive heating and prevent increases in circuit impedance as outlined in sections 300.3a and b. Without further ado, let's dive right into this important topic. Section 300.3a specifies that the single conductors listed in Table 310.4, 1, should only be used as part of one of the wiring methods covered in Chapter 3. Table 310.4, 1, provides detailed information about conductor insulation properties, including letter types, maximum operating temperatures, applications, and insulation and outer cover properties. These conductors listed in the table should not be used independently as overhead conductors unless they are part of a cable assembly or adequately protected and supported by conduit, tubing, raceway, cable tray, or enclosure. However, if the individual conductors are installed as separate overhead conductors in compliance with Section 255.6, they are not subject to the requirements of Section 300.3a. Section 225.6 addresses the allowance of individual conductors as overhead spans and festoon lighting, but it prohibits the use of indoor application conductors such as THHN for this type of installation. Moving on to Section 300.3, B, it states that all conductors of the same circuit, including the neutral and equipment grounding conductors, must be run in the same raceway, conduit body, auxiliary gutter, cable tray, cable bus assembly, trench, cable, or cord unless otherwise permitted in accordance with 300.3, B1, through, B4. Figure 1 serves as an example that complies with these rules, while Figure 2 represents an installation that violates Section 300.3, B. The main reasons for keeping all circuit conductors together are to reduce inductive heating and avoid increases in overall circuit impedance. Section 300.3, B, 1 permits conductors to be run in parallel in accordance with the provisions of 310.10, g. The requirement to run all circuit conductors within the same raceway, auxiliary gutter, cable tray, trench, cable, or cord applies separately to each portion of the paralleled installation. Equipment grounding conductors must comply with the provisions of 250.122, and parallel runs in cable trays must comply with the provisions of 392.20, c. 310.10 g specifies the minimum size of circuit conductors that can be installed in parallel which is 1 ot awg section 250.122 f deals with the equipment grounding conductor when a circuit conductor is installed in parallel in single raceways cable trays or multiple raceways section 392.20 c addresses the installation of single conductors connected in parallel in cable trays and requires them to be installed in groups consisting of no more than one conductor per phase, neutral, or grounded conductor to prevent current imbalance caused by inductive reactants. There is an exception that allows conductors to be installed in non-metallic raceways for underground applications. In this case, the conductors can be arranged as isolated phase installations, with each phase's conductors contained within separate conduits, and the neutrals for these phases placed within a final conduit. These raceways should be installed near each other, typically in a duct bank arrangement, without any ferrous metal installed between them to comply with section 300.20b. Installing raceways near each other is crucial to minimize inductive heating and prevent an increase in circuit impedance. Section 300.20b specifically addresses the issue of induced currents in ferrous metal enclosures or raceways. When an alternating current conductor passes through ferrous metal, it generates an induced current that causes the surrounding metal to heat up. To avoid inductive heating, it is necessary to ensure that no metal is installed between the ducts. Section 300.3b2 permits equipment grounding conductors to be installed outside a raceway or cable assembly in accordance with the provisions of 250.130 c for certain existing installations or 250.134 b exception number two for dc circuits equipment bonding conductors can be installed on the outside of raceways in accordance with 250.102 e 250.130 c specifies where an equipment grounding conductor can terminate in the case of non-grounding receptacle replacement or branch circuit extensions. 250.134 b 
Exception number 2 permits the equipment grounding conductor of DC circuits to be run separately from the circuit conductors. 250.102 E states that if equipment bonding conductors are installed on the outside, their length should not exceed 1.8 meters, 6 feet, and they should be routed with the raceway or enclosure. Section 300.3 B3 discusses non-ferrous wiring methods. Conductors with non-metallic or non-magnetic sheets when run in different raceways, auxiliary gutters, cable trays, trenches, cables, or cords, must comply with 300.20b. Single conductor type MI cables with non-magnetic sheets must comply with 332.31, and single conductor type MC cables with non-magnetic sheets must comply with 330.31, 330.116, and 300.20b. Section 300.20 b is about induced currents in ferrous metal enclosures or ferrous metal raceways while section 332.31 is where single conductor cables are used all phase conductors and where used the neutral conductor shall be grouped together to minimize induced voltage on the sheath and for section 330.31 where single conductor cables with a non-ferrous armor or sheath are used the installation shall comply with 300.20 this section pertains to the necessity of implementing measures to prevent induced currents when non-metallic or non-magnetic sheath conductors are routed through metallic enclosure walls with magnetic properties. Similarly, the second sentence issues a similar caution for type MI cables and refers to 332.31, which specifically addresses the concern regarding induced currents. Both of these provisions discuss techniques for mitigating the occurrence of induced currents. Section 300.3 B3 discusses non-ferrous wiring methods. Conductors with non-metallic or non-magnetic sheets, when run in different raceways, auxiliary gutters, cable trays, trenches, cables, or cords, must comply with 300.20 B. Single conductor type MI cables with non-magnetic sheets must comply with 332.31, and single conductor type MC cables with non-magnetic sheets must comply with 330.31. 330.116 and 300.20 b section 300.20 b is about induced currents in ferrous metal enclosures or ferrous metal raceways while section 332.31 is where single conductor cables are used all phase conductors and where used the neutral conductor shall be grouped together to minimize induced voltage on the sheath and for section 330.31 where single conductor cables with a non-ferrous armor or sheath are used, the installation shall comply with 300.20. This section pertains to the necessity of implementing measures to prevent induced currents when non-metallic or non-magnetic sheath conductors are routed through metallic enclosure walls with magnetic properties. Similarly, the second sentence issues a similar caution for type MI cables and refers to 332.31, which specifically addresses the concern regarding induced currents. Both of these provisions discuss techniques for mitigating the occurrence of induced currents. 300.3 B4 permits the limited use of a pull box equipped with a terminal block for the connection of the system neutral as the point of origin for branch circuit neutral conductors. That is, a properly sized neutral is run to the pull box, which is connected by an auxiliary gutter to a column width panel board. From the panel board, and the individual branch circuit neutrals may be run from the pull box and need not go back to the panel board where the hot conductors originate. This saves space within the panel board but is only permitted for column width panel boards connected by an auxiliary gutter to a pull box that is manufacturer equipped with a neutral terminal block. In our upcoming discussion, we will explore the benefits of keeping all circuit conductors together, specifically in terms of reducing inductive heating and preventing increases in overall circuit impedance. Thank you all for watching.